and um, to food pantries or to, to people who are coming seeking, seeking help? Sure. Milwaukee is primarily an urban community, but there was a work farm that was operated by our House of Correction, and we took that work farm over when it was closed. So it's a 208-acre farm. It's a vegetable farm, and so it grows 27 different varieties of fruits and vegetables. Those are planted by volunteers, and along with some of our staff farmers, and harvested later in the fall and delivered to our emergency food pantry network absolutely free of charge. And we do that because TFAP doesn't provide us with any fresh or wholesome foods. And do you know others who are doing things like that to try to supplement and provide, you know, fresh fruits and vegetables? It's challenging because the food bench or food bank network nationwide relies on unsaleable or less than wholesome foods that are donated by large corporations or large store chains. And instead of doing that, what we do is grow our own food, which we think is a more um, wholesome and sort of more agricultural and Wisconsin-based approach to meeting the need. Mm -hmm. And so are you able to get that out then quickly and get it distributed quickly? Sometimes on the same day. Mm -hmm. Are there other challenges, there are challenges you face in trying to do this and make sure that you have the availability of fresh, fresh vegetables? To well, we have the fresh fruit and vegetables from April through November. And then in the winter months, we don't have a lot going on. And we're back to the can and staple products that TFAP offers. Mm -hmm. Um, also, you alluded to this a little bit earlier. Ms. Brown had identified in her testimony that two programs that overlap um, in who may participate are SNAP and the Commodity Supplemental Food Program. And um, all low-income seniors are, available, are eligible for SNAP, while CSFP is only available to a limited number of seniors because of the cap on funding. Um, and I know you work with both programs, and so I wondered if you can comment if you think that CSFP is duplicative or redundant with SNAP and why it's important that we make sure, or if, if it is, if it's important that seniors have access to both programs? Well, clearly a senior in Milwaukee could receive both CSFP and SNAP. Our experience, however, is that the SNAP benefit is at $14 um, and rarely goes above $90 based on the person's medical experiences and asset tests. Um, but the um, CSFP program is going to provide them with a $50 box of canned and staple products. And so SNAP comes in um, and allows them to purchase in a very modest way anything that they might want that would be fresh, um, any meat or dairy, any um, kind of cheeses, anything, any vegetables or fruit, frankly, because there's just going to be two cans of fruit and four cans of vegetables in the CSFP box. Or things that maybe personally are more appealing, as you were referring to earlier, too. Yeah, canned beef stew. They get one can of canned beef stew or one can of beef and juices. Mm -hmm. Instantized milk is not a favorite of most people. Um, and sometimes they're given foods that they can't eat, like grapefruit juice. Yep. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, Mr. Nader, what do you think is the most effective method of reaching um, SNAP households through nutrition education that you found in your experience so far? Well, honestly, the Cooking Matters program, I can attest, is, uh, is working well. Um, you know, it's, it's a very structured, formatted program, and um, we take them through each step of the way, and at the end of that six weeks, I feel like they've come a long way from where they started to be able to make the wise choices and be able to empower themselves to, uh, to shop accordingly. And if we kind of turn that around, what do you think are the greatest challenges or what things would you like to be able to do differently that you think would help make it more effective? Um, I, I would say just if we could access more folks, you know, we, we, uh, it's all volunteer based. I'm out there on the front lines. Uh, we, it, each class is usually someone from the nutrition field, say a, a volunteer registered dietitian, and then a chef. Mm -hmm. And so um, we're, you know, constantly uh, struggling to get proper volunteers. And, uh, and then once we have that in place, I'm out there, you know, making sure we get the folks out there uh, to teach the classes, but then to get, you know, getting people aware. So I guess awareness would be the answer. Mm -hmm. Well, thank you very much. Um, I yield back. Thank you, Mr. Madam Chair. Thank you. The chair recognizes.